What's up, ladies, gents, girls with lace fronts, dudes with kids? It's the one and only, you can't clone me, queen, baby. And before we get into the video, make sure you go down below to subscribe and join the queendom. And if you already a part of this palace, hey, y'all, hey. So as you already read this title down below, we're going to begin into Tyler Perry's new BET Plus series called Bra. Now listen, I'm a big fan of Tyler Perry's um, BET show called Sisters. Like granted, a lot of people don't like it and they just don't understand the quality that basically Tyler Perry is putting out. But I love Sisters. I, so much so, I not so much love Sisters, but I love like the different storylines that everybody have. Now the acting is alright-ish, but it's still watchable. The, it gets me... So I think I love the show so much because it gets me so, so, so tight. So basically, bruh, is like the boy version of sisters. Like, they kind of even intertwine. So let's get into the video. Okay, so let's get started on the show and basically what it's about. Um, bruh is basically about four guys. They basically, like... I want to say in their late 20s, 30s, early 30s. And they basically just trying to figure out life. Like one is a lawyer, one is a doctor, one is a architect, architect, <laughs> is an architect. And the other one is just trying to figure out his way through everything. And we're going to get into like his storyline later on. But yeah, that's basically the premise of what Bruh is about. Before I get into like the full review of how I feel about the season so far and the series so far, I just want to take my time out to basically talk about the um, the actors in their roles. Like I just I have to talk about it and the the part that they play in the whole series. Like I feel like that is so important, and I just want to talk down on each character because it's just ugh, I just don't understand, man. But maybe bro wasn't for me, but I'm gonna watch it just so I can talk bad about me because they need to get it together. Granted, sisters, like I was telling y'all before, which is like the girl version of bruh, sisters ain't no better, but bruh, come on. Okay, so I'm gonna first start off with John. John to me is basically like the main character, and I feel like the only reason why he's the main character because all his friends that's under him, basically storyline kind of like intertwines with his. Like they they go back into him at the end of the day. Like a lot of stuff wouldn't happen if it wasn't John. Like if John isn't there type of vibe. Or a lot of conversations won't be had if John is not the premise of the conversation is what I'm basically trying to say. But John is the friend that didn't graduate from college. He really don't got much going for himself. I'm not gonna say he don't have much going for himself. He actually has a lot going for, for himself. He's like business minded. So he basically have a, um, I wanna say like a sub shop. But the thing is with the sub shop, it wasn't his money that he put up for the sub shop. It was more of his friends gave him the money to put the sub shop, put into the sub shop. And I guess he supposed to pay them back, but he, you know, it's new, so he really don't have the money to pay them back yet. But eventually, he'll end up getting the money. But because he didn't graduate from school or he isn't, like, a top-tier, um, I want to say in a top-tier job career, as most people would say, which is, like, the doctor, lawyer, architect his other friends are, a lot of people talk down on him. The main person out of everybody that talks down on John is his mom. And... Honestly, she's the most aggravating, not needed person on the show. Like, granted, she's only needed because, of course, he's, she's the mother. And I get her role in the show because, granted, she helps him with the sub shop. He still lives with her, and she gives him money as well. But it's like... The way that she talked down on him is so like, it's aggravating, like not even disgusted. Cause you know, most moms are gonna like, I feel like most moms like to give you tough love, but her tough love is more aggravating and it's so unnecessary. And it's just like, she just overdo everything. And it's like, like you ain't even have to do that or you ain't even have to say that type of thing. Honestly, out of every cast member or every character on this show, the mom is literally my least like, like it's just too much. But yeah, out of everybody, she's the one that talked bad about him the most. So that's John. Next, the person who I'm going to talk about is Dr. Tom. Who is the doctor? Now, Tom is like my favorite 
character so far out of everybody because he's the considerate one he's the friend that wants to help and always do and figure out what's wrong and how can we help what we need to do like he's like the understanding friend like he's the friend that i feel like everybody needs like because he's like the friend that's in the middle that okay well he needs money let's just give him the money because we know he's gonna pay him pay us back that's our friend and beyond that like we owe him this and i'm gonna tell y'all the reason why they owe him but he's like well we owe him this so let's help him out like he gonna be good for it like don't do him like that he's that type of friend but the thing is with tom is tom got his own problems going on basically and the bad thing about tom like tom is my favorite per character and I, he may be a lot of other people's favorite character but i feel like tom is going to get a lot of backlash at his job because it seems like he's the type of guy that probably is supposed to get everything that he wants but he's not that type of person like he's so nice and so humble but to everybody else that may be looking at him he's like the oh you're a black doctor you think you're better than everybody and you can have whoever you want and it's really not like that like he's not that type of person then we have mike ugh like ugh like Ugh. Like, <laughs> that's really all I can really, like, give out for Mike right now because Mike is the friend that he is so mean. He is, he does entirely too much to be the type of person that he is. Like, he's short. He probably got short man syndrome. Like, he got to have short man syndrome. Like, you know when you have short man syndrome, like, you got so much going for yourself but because you short you feel like either you ain't doing enough or somebody that you're with or people around you feel like you just not enough because you're short so you just try to give off this like persona like mm, i'm tough or, mm, i got it going on and you should want to be with me or you should do this for me like he gives off that but it's like no who are you why should i want to do this for you like he don't like who are you short man but anyways mike is the lawyer and he basically sleeps with any and everybody mike is the one who likes to put in his input but every time he puts in his input it's like the negative of everything like tom may be like oh let's help him out and and and, and what's his name mike will be like nah let's not like he's that friend he's not a good friend honestly if you really think about it because he is the reason for a lot of downfalls for john that he don't know about and it's like how dare you like how dare you i don't really have much to say about mike because he just the only thing he got going for himself is the fact that he a lawyer and he sleep with everybody and he thinks everybody owe him something and they don't they don't moving along whew, we have bill i also don't like bill <laughs> It's not funny, but if y'all really watch the show or y'all started watching the show or y'all up to the most recent episode, y'all understand why I don't like Bill. And I hope, I hope y'all really don't like Bill. You know what? Actually, it's a lot of guys that watch the show. I ain't gonna say a lot of guys, but I did see this one guy that said that they understand where Bill comes from. So Bill is the architect and Bill is the type of friend that he's, I feel like to me, he's Mike Duboy. Like every time Mike say something, say do something or don't do something like, He'll, he'll go along with it. So if Mike say, oh, don't talk to that girl or that girl ain't good for you, he will not talk to the girl because he think the girl not good for him because that's what Mike said. Or if Mike say, don't give money to John, he's not going to give, Bill is not going to give money to John because Mike said it. Like, he's that friend. He's the dude boyfriend. He's too big for that. Like, literally, he's the biggest friend. Like, you too big for that. And he's smart. Like, he's an architect. He got things going for himself. But he's very when it comes to women, I ain't even gonna say comes to women, but yeah, comes to women, he is so, so, so inconsiderate. Especially to this one girl that he he's trying to get back with. Like he's just the inconsiderate friend. And do boyfriend. That's all I got. So since I'm gonna be talking about the whole first season up to episode eight, it's gonna be like real quick, so I'm not so much long-winded. <laughs> in a way but 
the whole the, the season is basically all about or yeah so the season is basically about john um who basically wants money from his friends so he can invest into this um this club that a lot of people used to go to or probably still go to but they closed the club down but he like well let me invest into it because i know it'll get the money back or it'll bring some type of revenue and i could pay everybody the money that i already owe y'all and then some in interest type thing but the thing is he needs his friend money to get the club so but the friends are at a point like dude you already owe us money for the sub shop which he owns right now you already owe me money for this. So why would I give you more money to go ahead and invest into a nightclub that we don't even think that you should be doing because you need to focus on this so we can get our money back for this type of thing. But John was like, bro, just like give me a chance. Give me money. Like I know I'm good for it type of thing. So eventually we kind of meet John's cousin who is basically like a, he's a drug dealer. And you know drug dealers they be having their money but john didn't want to get into no type of situation with his cousin because he the cousin got the money but the cousin also got drug money who wants to be dealing with that or just deal with anything that has to do with where he getting the money from the cousin getting the money from but the, the cousin like bruh i need to clean this money you trying to invest in this i got the money like here yeah. but he like nah so of course he gonna ask his friends friends say no so he ends up going back to his cousin like all right so John goes to his cousin, get the money from his cousin, and the cousin get him like 500K, like $500,000 off rip, like, here this or yours, do what you need to do with it and just pay me back. I just need it clean. So when you give it back to me, it's gonna be clean money. So he was like, all right, bro, he ain't really wanna do it, but he don't have no other choice. So he not really talking to his friends at this point because they, they ain't wanna help him out, but they, he, you know, it's your friend. You mad at them, but you still gonna hang out with them or you still gonna go around them. But just so happened, they was getting ready to have like a um, get together like they usually do. And he overheard them talking about him like, um, how, basically like how dare he ask me for ask us for money. Like we always doing for him. He can't even give us nothing back. So he kind of angry and now he got this money. He wasn't gonna spend it, but he was like, yeah, shit, y'all talking about me? All right, I got something for y'all. So he goes around them. He like, basically here, here's your 75,000 you gave me. Here's your 50K you gave me. Here's your 70K you gave me. Like, here, I don't need nothing from y'all. Don't ask me for nothing. I won't ask y'all for nothing. It's over, it's done. But get y'all. Oh Put on my middle Ooh, why would you do that, girl? <laughs> my middle fingers, I wasn't trying to do that. After he done gave them their money, they cut back, he leaves them. And Tom was like, nah, I don't. basically Tom is literally the smart one. He like, bruh, I don't know where he got this money from. I'm not for the Yuzi. The other two, just happy that he gave them money back, which is understandable. Cause of course, 75K, 50K, it don't matter if you a lawyer daughter, like that, you, that's your money. You need that money. And it's like straight up cash. But that should have been suspect. But they don't too so inconsiderate Mike and Bill, the two that just I just don't like. They just so inconsiderate. So of course they're not gonna think like, oh, this could be this could be drug money. They don't think they think so less of him that they don't know what it could be, but they just happy they got their money back. Like that's just so so crazy to me. So Tom is the only one like trying to go find John, talk to him, and he basically like, bro, where you get the money from? His mama like, what money? Cause they talking in front of the mama. The mama like, what money? And he was like, um, this money. And the mama just started talking down, going back to talking down on him like, you got that money for your cousin? You ain't no good. Basically, you ain't ish. So he like, you know what? I'm tired of you too, mom. Here, here's your cut. Cause the mama did give him some money too. So he like, well, here, here's your cut. I don't even want to deal with you. And the mama like, I don't want that money, boy. I already know that drug money. Like, don't give me that money. And the friend Tom is also like, oh, well, I don't want the money either if it's drug money. So here. Yeah. So they trying to get him the money back. Of course, he not want to take it. Because right at this point, he's just being stubborn. Which is understandable. And, and the reason why it's understandable, we're going to get some. So he being stubborn and don't want to get the money back. Um, eventually we end up come to come and find out that John in college, when they was in college, John took a rap for Mike. Mike was apparently drunk as hell, belligerent, like he was just terrible and he decides to sleep with the Dean's daughter. Now, 
Of course, most people, most girls, of course, they don't care. They don't have nothing to do with being a Dean or anything. But, you know, if you want to sleep with somebody, child who's so high up, like, expect some repercussions, whether they it was consensual or not. Like, people, parents, they don't care. Like, they think the world of their child. So, if it's you that, that probably made my child this person that she is now, of course, they're going to always think it's you the reason where it's literally just your child who's like that. Of course... They um they gonna you gonna be the one to blame. So beyond beyond and the thing is that wasn't even a situation. The situation was after he slept with her, the girl comes out of the room crying, y'all. Y'all already know what is going. She crying, she's yelling, she's basically saying like, oh I ain't wanna do this. Like she basically saying that Mike raped her. Now he drunk, so he don't know what the hell going on. He probably still in the room, knocked out, gone. So. The girl about to call, the, of course, her mom, the dean, the police, everybody. So, John is, who wasn't at the party, y'all, takes, comes to help Mike and everybody else get back home. And he takes the rap, like, basically saying, like, he was the one who raped the girl. Because she didn't even remember who the hell she slept with. So, it was like, it was no win-win. It was whoever she said was the one that raped her, that was the person who raped her. Nothing more, nothing less. Like, but he, so he decided to take the rap for her. And he gets kicked out of school, probably got a whole record. Now he is nothing that this boy can do, which is why he's asking his friends for money to invest into the sub shop that he got and the the club that he want to buy. Now, Mike don't know this, but Bill and Tom know this. So that's why Tom is the next one like, damn, like we really the ones who, who could have stopped this. Like we didn't stop this. That's how Tom is thinking. And we kind of like the reason for his downfall. Cause Tom and Mike, I mean, Mike, no, I'm sorry. Bill and Tom was at the party that Mike was at when he did whatever he did with the girl, but John wasn't. So of course Tom feel like, okay, well if he asked for it, here, you can have it. Bill like, I feel like Bill feel the same way too, but Bill follow Mike so much that he don't have a mind on his own. And now it's like, okay, well, Mike said no, so no. But Mike don't even know that this boy took a whole rap for him. Like, you wouldn't even be a lawyer right now. If it wasn't for me, nigga, you'll probably be knocked up type of vibe. So they basically um goes back, comes to this conclusion, and they want to help John. But John is now stubborn because he was like, I came to y'all first. I extra, I begged y'all to help me. And y'all did not want to help me. So now I don't need y'all already pay for this club with this drug money. I'm just going to have to flip it and get it back. And, it, and that kind of sums up everything of how the how the show goes about with a few like scenes in between of like um Mike who's with this girl who he considered his side piece yet he saw it to this girl like she she has to understand it, like oh, okay you said we only sleeping together I don't want nothing from you you don't want nothing from me okay like that's fine but he in his mind really think this girl want him and she like I don't want you and he ends up seeing this um the girl out with a I guess a big time ball player who getting like 32 uh, got a 32 million contract and then of course his short man syndrome comes out and he feels some type of way cause he like well, I can't be a girl like that. If she would have got like that, yeah, because you, like, that girl, like, you the one who said you wanted just to sleep with me. Like, it was never supposed to be nothing more, nothing less. Like, that's all it was supposed to be. Girl, of course, of course he get into his feelings. I'm talking about girl, but yeah. Of course he get into his feelings about the, the whole situation the, and try to make it seem like she was the one getting her feelings. That girl did not care. She probably had a whole list. But what's up? And you probably was not even top tier of that list. And that's what he felt some type of way. So that was like an in-between situation that happened. Bill, in-between situation that happens um, with everything is he finds out that his ex-girlfriend, who he dogged out, did dirty, disgusting, nasty, terrible, is about to get married to this guy who's an architect as well. Now... All of a sudden, he sees this girl, and he wants to get closure. I'm just confused on the whole closure thing because you're the one who done me. So where is your closure coming from? You had closure the day that you felt like I wasn't good enough for you. So why do you need closure? I'm confused. Help me understand it. But this mother effer, this person, Bill, 
is so inconsiderate, y'all, to the point that he ends up getting the guy that the girl is about to marry. They end up basically calling off the wedding completely because his narcissistic behind. First of all, I ain't even gonna put it all on him because she was slow as well. Because if somebody did you dirty and dogged you out, it's no no room that we can be in together that we need to have a conversation. Like it's nothing. Like nothing we we need to say. Cause clearly I ain't. She clearly didn't need the closure. But if she was she was so in love with him, she probably he probably was the love of her life. So of course she gave him that opportunity. But the way basically the wedding gets caught off because of Bill. I guess they about to um you know get together try everything out which i hope that's not the situation and i really hope that is not what's about to happen because she really need to go ahead and marry that other guy because that man treated her like a queen and she knows it so i don't even know why she letting bill put her in this predicament like literally that makes no sense to me and the in-between situation that Tom got going on beyond trying to help John is he about to get fired because of the crazy girl that's bipolar that is so addicted to him that done went and snitched and lied on him to the chief of staff. I don't know. Is it called chief of staff at the hospital? I'm going to just say chief. The chief at the hospital and the chief is a black woman. Now, this is why I'm upset. I feel like in any situation that someone is accusing somebody of, as the chief who's going to be head of the situation, I just feel like it should be no bias. Like, but she was so biased. She straight up let him know, like, oh, you think you too good? You think you deserve that woman? Not so much deserved her, but you think you can get any woman that you got and you probably did rape her. Basically, she's saying, like, you did rape her. Um you're suspended until further notice and you're gonna go down for this so she didn't even give him the benefit of the doubt like she literally straight went straight for the gutter and basically is saying like we finna get you out of here and that's just so wrong because she's being biased and in situations like that when you about to be the head of the investigation of it of it you cannot be biased but i feel like she's biased because she feel like oh well i'm a black woman so i understand where she's coming from and y'all men always get away with this but that's not the case. Like, in some situations, you really have to do your research, do your digging. Like, and then, what, what it is, your, your innocent until proven guilty so therefore that man is not guilty you don't even know nothing all you know is this girl came in there and said that he raped her or it was not consensual but he came in he said it was consensual it's just gonna be a whole big thing because it happened at a holiday party and they both he said they both was drunk so i know this is going to be a crazy 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 case so i really want to see where it's going to go but the girl is really crazy and she's really bipolar so it's like you don't know where this thing go because somebody can be bipolar and telling the truth but somebody can be bipolar and lying too so it's like how do you know if this person lying that's why it's i'm so scared for him because everything can just crumble in a matter of seconds so that was that's tom basically situation within all of all all of everything that's everything else that's going on but overall i feel like the series is good the acting is of course mediocre like i don't even want to say it's mediocre i think the way that it is shot in a way that they put out everything makes it like a mediocre type of show overall but i think that is the idea of tyler perry or the idea of tyler perry was trying to put out because if if Tyler Perry wanted quality. Tyler Perry would give us quality. Like, we're not going to act like Tyler Perry don't give us quality. So, beyond, like, the, I, it feels like it's one of them shows that you know it's a set that, you so, that we used to watch back in the day. Like, you know it's a set type of show. And it looks like you for the hear like a live audience, but it's not a live audience type of thing. Like, it's one of them shows, so a lot of people not used to that type of quality. People are used to movie movie quality shows being on TV now because of how everything is. But I don't think that's the whole premise or idea that Tyler Perry is trying to put out. And once you understand that and get past that, then you can kind of enjoy the show in the writing of the show of bruh and the show of sisters 
And I guess the uh, it's another one called Ruthless, but I haven't watched the show Ruthless yet. I'll probably talk about that later. But overall, the show is okay. Like, it's a good show to watch. I'm not going to talk down on it because I understand what it is. Once you, Like I said, once you understand what it is, you'll get over it. So, yeah. That's kind of my take and my premise of everything of, bruh. I know I'm long-winded and I've just been talking, been talking, but remember, I'm talking about everything that happened from episode one to episode eight. From this point on, I should probably do episode by episode, but I just try to get everything all done in one. So with that being said, make sure y'all like, make sure y'all comment, let me know, do y'all watch the show, do y'all like the show, and make sure y'all subscribe and join the channel. Oh, bye y'all.